Welcome to the First Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Ann Arbor. If you live in the United States or if you've been watching the election from other countries, I don't need to tell you that this has been a long, intense, exhausting week. And so as we gather together, may we take this time to pause, breathe deeply again, and find support and inspiration in one another. One of our many forms of support, especially during challenging times, are our rituals. Rituals give us a sense of rhythm and constancy and remind us of the deeper meaning of our lives. And so we begin our time with the ritual of lighting the chalice. Our chalice is a reminder of our connections to Unitarian Universalists all over the world and to our living tradition. So I invite you to join me now in lighting your own chalice at home even if just in spirit. And together, let us say our chalice lighting words. We light this chalice for the light of truth. We light this chalice for the warmth of love. We light this chalice for the energy of action. We light this chalice for the harmony. Another way that we begin our time together is by repeating our covenant. As Unitarian Universalists, we don't have a single common belief, but we do have our covenant, which is a set of promises about how we will be together. It sounds so simple, and yet as we see in the wider world around us, it can be so easy and destructive to put ideology before relationship and humanity and community. And so as we repeat these words, let them be a reminder, not only of our commitments to one another, but also that there is another way to be in the world, a way that is centered on love and compassion. Together we say, the spirit of this church is love and service is its law. This is our covenant with each other, to dwell together in peace, to search for truth in love and to help one another. We move deeper now into our time together, but at the end of our service, I invite you to join us for another important ritual, our social hour. You can go to uuaa.org slash social hour to join us for small group guided conversations. These conversations give us a chance to reflect on what happened in the service and in our lives, and they also give us a chance to get to know each other in new ways. If you're new to our community, we want to extend a special welcome to you and invite you to Social Hour as well. If you want to get to know more about us and ask questions, you can let the Social Hour host know and they'll put you in a special breakout room for newcomers. For all of us, newcomers and long timers and everyone in between, welcome to this community. Welcome to worship. watched you walk away And I watched us fall apart And I wondered how I'd get through it And how I'd ever regain my heart But the sun still shines And the rain still falls And the moon comes out and the birds still call And forgiveness is a powerful thing And I can still hear those words And sense the pain in my heart But I don't lie The sun still shines and the rain still falls and the moon comes out and the birds still call and 
forgiveness is a powerful thing And I wish you the best I wish you so well And I hope you never ever have to go through that hell But the beautiful thing is that hell isn't real It's when you're caught between the prayer and the Because I let you go My stilled heart started anew And because I didn't let my sorrow linger I found a whole new world and a love so true Cause the sun still shines and the rain still falls And the moon comes out and the birds still call And forgiveness is a powerful thing And I wish you the best I wish you so well And I hope you never ever have to go through that hell But the beautiful thing Is that hell isn't real it's when you're caught between the prayer and the wheel The sun still shines and the rain still falls And the moon comes out and the birds still call And forgiveness is a powerful thing Of Thee I Sing, A Letter to My Daughters, by Barack Obama. Have I told you lately how wonderful you are? How the sound of your feet running from afar brings dancing rhythms to my day? How you laugh and sunshine spills into the room? Have I told you that you are creative? A woman named Georgia O'Keeffe moved to the desert and painted petals, bone, bark. She helped us see big beauty in what is small, the hardness of stone and the softness of feather. Have I told you that you are smart? That you braid great ideas with imagination? A man named Albert Einstein turned pictures in his mind into giant advances in science, changing the world with energy and light. Have I told you that you are brave? A man named Jackie Robinson played baseball and showed us all how to turn fear to respect and respect to love. He swung his bat with the grace and strength of a lion and gave brave dreams to other dreamers. Have I told you that you are a healer? Sitting Bull was a Sioux medicine man who healed broken hearts and broken promises. It is fine that we are different, he said. For peace, it is not necessary for eagles to be crows. Though he was put in prison, his spirit soared free on the plains, and his wisdom touched the generations. Have I told you that you have your own song? A woman named Billie Holiday wore a gardenia in her hair and sang beautiful blues to the world. Her voice 
full of sadness and joy, made people feel deeply and add their melodies to the chorus. Have I told you that you are strong? A woman named Helen Keller fought her way through long, silent darkness. Though she could not see or hear, she taught us to look at and listen to each other. Never waiting for life to get easier, she gave others courage to face their challenges. Have I told you how important it is to honor others' sacrifices? A woman named Maya Lin designed the Vietnam Veterans Memorial to remember those who gave their lives in the war, and the Civil Rights Memorial to thank the many who fought for equality. Public spaces should be filled with art, she thought, so that we can walk amidst it, recalling the past and inspired to fix the future. Have I told you that you are kind? A woman named Jane Adams fed the poor and helped them find jobs. She opened doors and gave people hope. She taught adults and invited children to play and laugh and let their spirits grow wide. Have I told you that you don't give up? When violence erupted in our nation, a man named Martin Luther King Jr. taught us unyielding compassion. He gave us a dream that all races and creeds would walk hand in hand. He marched and he prayed and, one at a time, opened hearts and saw the birth of his dreams in us. Have I told you that you are an explorer? A man named Neil Armstrong was the first to walk on the moon. He watched the world from way up high, and we watched his lunar landing leaps, which made us brave enough to take our own big, bold strides. Have I told you that you are inspiring? A man named Cesar Chavez showed farm workers their own power when they felt they had none. The people were poor, but worked hard and loved the land. Cesar picketed, prayed, and talked. The people listened to their hearts and marched for their rights. Si se puede, Cesar said. Yes, you can. Have I told you that you are part of a family? A man named Abraham Lincoln knew that all of America should work together. He kept our nation one and promised freedom to enslaved brothers and sisters. This man of the people, simple and plain, asked more of our country, that we behave as kin. Have I told you to be proud to be American? Our first president, George Washington, believed in liberty and justice for all. His barefoot soldiers crossed wintry rivers, forging ever on. He helped make an idea into a new country, strong and true, a country of principles, a country of citizens. Have I told you that America is made up of people of every kind. People of all races, religions, and beliefs. People from the coastlines to the mountains. People who have made bright lights shine by sharing their unique gifts and giving us the courage to lift one another up, to keep up the fight, to work and build upon all that is good in our nation. Have I told you that they are all a part of you? Have I told you that you are one of them and that you are the future? And have I told you that I love you? I like to call her chin She always shows
Our reading today is A Community Means Strength by Starhawk. We are all longing to go home to some place we have never been, a place half remembered and half envisioned we can only catch glimpses of from time to time. Community. Somewhere there are people to whom we can speak with passion without having the words catch in our throats. Somewhere a circle of hands will open to receive us. Eyes will light up as we enter. Voices will celebrate with us whenever we come into our own power. Community means strength that joins our strength to do the work that needs to be done. Arms to hold us when we falter. A circle of healing. A circle of friends. Some place where we can be free. Bye. 
What a joy it is to have Tret Fury with us today. Providing in the song that we just heard this beautiful imagery of uh, a hawk and a dove, the longing through metaphor to transform the energy of the hawk, aggression, violence, into that of the dove. Gentleness, peace, love. All of that symbolized and captured in the imagery of a dove. It's been an extraordinary week in which to be holding that imagery. If your interaction with that week was anything like mine, you may have found yourself at times surprised, maybe even deeply unsettled, by the realization that the divisions in our nation are deep and profound and continuing. Pollsters, if we were to believe them, and many of us did, including myself, have led us to think that, you know, we might be turning some, some corner uh, in our electorate, uh, that the election outcomes might uh, express a, a, a repudiation of certain ways of thinking and being, and that a, a different set, a recommitment, to American notions of character and goodness, honesty, compassion, inclusion, diversity, some kind of recommitment to those core values might emerge. Instead, not only do the divisions of our society seem just as profound as ever, there is also an increasing sense of alienation from those who think differently than us. Across the board, it's not one group or another. Across the board. One commentator in the news this week called this unsustainable, this level of, of rift in our social fabric as a, as a society. They referred to it as unsustainable. And I think that that possibility of, in and of itself is worthy of really deep reflection. Can any society continue indefinitely with such a profound level of disagreement around who we are as a nation, what our problems are as a nation, what the potential solutions to those problems could be? We continue to have some glimmer of hope that brilliant leaders will emerge that may help guide us, help lead us in working with these divisions, finding ways to bridge them, find commonality, find shared endeavor. That longing rests in my heart as well. That is the longing, the expression of the dove, the beauty of, of peace and gentleness and love as it can be embodied. You know, as I, as I personally held all these currents of emotion so strong for me over the course of this past week, I found myself yearning for and looking for words of wisdom. Teachers, leaders, others. The president of our denomination, Reverend Susan Frederick Gray, her words came to me, perhaps to you also, via email last Thursday. 
what Reverend Susan wrote to us Unitarian Universalists. She said, no matter the outcome of election 2020, the truth I know is that hope is found in the struggle. Actions rooted in one's values, rooted in what we love and know to be true, kindles the fires of hope and inspiration in our own hearts and in the hearts of the communities we belong to. Hope is not found in being bystanders. Hope grows when we show up for justice, for love, and for human dignity. Side by side, I turn to the words of Viktor Frankl, who many of you know as the brilliant thinker who survived the Holocaust, survived a Nazi death camp. My gosh, as, as challenging as the times that we live in are, I think of Viktor Frankl and others who also survived that brutal experience, brutalizing, dehumanizing experience, and emerged out of that with, with insight and wisdom to share with us on, on the nature of being human. What Viktor Frankl invited us to do, he said, you know, we human beings often think of what we need, expect, or want from life. He took that question, he wanted us to invert it, entirely invert it. Rather than what we need, want, expect from life, what does life need from us? In Man's Search for Meaning, he goes on to say, our, our answer must consist not in talk and meditation, but in right action and in right conduct. We need to stop asking ourselves about the meaning of life and instead to think of ourselves as those who are being questioned by life itself daily and hourly. From that perspective, what does life need from us? What does our society, so deeply divided along these 50-50 lines, need from us? The teacher, Meg Wheatley, author, poet, teacher, practitioner in the Buddhist Shambhala tradition, Meg Wheatley teaches that the answers are, are, are local. The possibility that we yearn for is local. Create and build right where you are with the people most immediately around you. Start at home. Start with the communities that we're connected to, belong to, invested in. This is how change ripples out from smaller circles of connection out and out and out further. And look at who we are as UUAA. How are, we have been responding already to this set of needs and this set of questions. The fact that there's a persistent and profound national rift, really, a rift in our civil society, this is not news to us Unitarian Universalists or us at UUAA. We have known and we have been present to, those, to that need. I was talking to Administrator Edlin this week and we came up in, our, in that conversation with, with some beautiful language. You know, how do we become, how are we already the exemplars of goodness and human possibility? I love that framing, that language of, of being an exemplar. It's a very different energy. You may recall in last Sunday's service, I mentioned, you know, we don't have to go around convincing anybody, trying to change them or convince them that their, their understanding of their own human experience is somehow flawed or wrong. That actually is a form of aggression. It's the energy of the hawk. It's a form of imposing ourselves on others. There's no need to do that, but it's also not effective in the time that we're living in. More, more full of possibility, more full of potential. 
is being the living embodiment, the living example or exemplar of that goodness and human potential. We at UUAA have been doing this. We are the people who have been engaged in activities such as sustainable farming, both on our land, on Farmer Bill's land, engaging in it, teaching in it, showing how that's possible. We are the people who have been showing up for, for others in our community who have a variety of legal status, documented, undocumented, migrants, immigrants needing support and help in navigating life in the United States and our legal system. We are the folks who in this time of pandemic, as all of us are taking such careful and good care, best that we can of our own individual health and the health of those we love and care for, our building, our physical UUAA building, has become a haven Monday through Friday for those families that need childcare, those essential workers that are going back out into the world to try and make the best positive difference that they can in a time of such challenging need, our building serves as a daycare center for those essential workers, full of the energy, voices, joy, learning of young, young ones. We are the people who have expanded solar panels on the roof of our building, stepping into that commitment to be the people who address climate change, who are actively working to turn around the devastating impacts of, of climate change. We are the people who live into a community ethic of care and love, who show up when there are deaths, illnesses, losses, uncertainties in the lives of one another. We show up with, with emails and cards and phone calls, gifts of flowers, shawls appearing on the doorstep as an expression of how we can wrap ourselves in the warmth and love of community. My gosh, I'm going to try not to cry as I share this with you. You know, our, our pastoral care committee recognizing just how hard the times are that we're in for, for families that are having to figure out how to turn their living rooms into school rooms, kids that are used to being around dozens, if not hundreds of their peers bouncing off the walls with, with missing the interactions that are more familiar to them. Our pastoral care team is, is beginning to orient itself towards offering respite meals to families and needs. It's such an amazing and, and generous act of loving kindness, gentleness, love, caring. We are the people that have already been exemplifying these very best human qualities. My friends, we can trust that impulse in us the needs ahead of us are so vast. I don't even have adjectives to, to describe the challenge, the challenges that lie before humanity, that, that lie before us as citizens of this nation. They have never been clearer. You don't need me to tell you what they are. We know. We know. And what is possible is no less vast. Trust in your own potential. Trust in the possibilities that you are able to bring alive through your living example, wherever you are in your life journey or on the spectrum of age and possibility. The smallest act of kindness can brighten somebody's day, creating in them a greater capacity to see their own goodness, to recognize that, that they have that same potential too of offering a kind word, of going maybe just slightly out of their way 
to show up as the embodiment of love and caring for one another, for humanity, for our state, for our nation, for our planet, for all the beings on it. We Unitarian Universalists have always believed this. We love the world of ideas. We love talking about them, debating them. We love exploring all the philosophy and ethics traditions of the world. They're beautiful. There's beauty. There's wisdom in them. Oh, and the intellectual diversity. My gosh. So, so much fun to, to explore and learn. And we take all of that brilliance, insight, beauty, and embody it as action. The need for that, the call for that, is clear. We are the people that our community needs, that the world needs. Trust. Trust in your own goodness. Trust in the grace and serendipity that flows from that goodness. Trust that every ounce of it is transformative, for it is. For it is. We have seen clearer <laughs> than so many others how aggression ripples, how aggression itself in language and embodiment indeed is a form of violence and harm that ripples through communities and the world. We have seen this experienced it perhaps even ourselves, personally. Flip it, just as Viktor Frankl flips the question, it's not what we need from the world or from life. Open ourselves up in a spirit of groundedness and gentleness to what life needs from each of us individually in the same way know deeply and well that your acts of love and gentleness, grace and goodness ripple out just as powerfully as the aggression that grabs the headline news. Nobody reports at the 6 p.m. news <laughs> all these beautiful acts of goodness that we as just one community have brought alive, but they are nonetheless true. And the beautiful thing is, as I mentioned in last week's service, we don't have to convince anybody, right? We don't have to argue with anybody. When we are that shining example, others are attracted to us. They see. They see the possibility. They see the love. They see the gentleness. Like-minded communities find each other this way. Like-minded communities finding each other become a movement. Movements become change. Movements become culture. Trust in your own potential. The world needs us Unitarian Universalists. We are a people of love and faith and goodness. Let us continue to know that well and bring it alive in all that we are, all that we say, all that we do.
Let's sit with that song for a moment. If only we could be carried further away from the killers, the warmongers, the brutality, the boasters, the braggers, the hatred that surrounds us at this point in history. If only we could walk far enough, wander long enough to be away from it all. I know I feel that right now, but it's not new. Trett wrote that song in 2004, and even then it wasn't new. As I'm recording this, the results of the election are still in flux. But no matter the outcome, what is clear is that an extraordinary number of people, close to half of all those who voted, millions of people, still showed support for a government that glorifies white supremacy, promotes division, undermines public health, and disregards science. They support someone who does not believe in the inherent worth and dignity of every person, does not believe that the lives of black, indigenous, and people of color matter, or that trans, queer, lesbian, bisexual, gay lives matter. They choose hate over love. This dissonance with what we as Unitarian Universalists covenant to affirm and promote is jarring. We affirm and promote the inherent worth and dignity of every person. We promote the goal of world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. And we affirm that there is justice, equity, and compassion in human relations. Some days I feel this dissonance physically, in my body, in my muscles and bones. My impulse then is to resolve that dissonance. And one thing that consistently brings me balance and restores harmony is a very simple breathing meditation. Breathe in peace, breathe out love. That's it. You don't need any special equipment. You don't need to sit in a particular position. You don't need to worry about the time. Even if you do this for 15 seconds while you stand in line at the grocery store, it helps restore balance. But I find if I do give it time and let the repetitions continue, I find a rhythm to the exercise that brings me deep peace. So will you join me and find a comfortable position, whatever it is, sitting or standing, maybe you want to walk. I especially love to do this while walking, but today I'm limited in my space. But I will imagine each step as I begin. Simply breathe in. 
breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in peace, breathe out love. Breathe in peace, breathe out love. Breathe in peace, breathe out love. Dear ones, may our individual and collective dissonances resolve. May you be restored to harmony and balance. Let love be the center of our passion that will carry us further towards peace. Amen, Ashe, and may it be so. time together today comes to a close, we now know who the president-elect and vice president-elect of our nation are, in no small part due to the dedication and commitment of many individuals and members and friends of our community who worked tirelessly for months to help ensure that Michiganders could access their democratic right to vote and have their voices count. We're under no illusion. The needs of our nation are great. The needs of our time are many and deep. And we will now be able to engage in that continued work, that sustained work of building a shared society in a different framework of language and tone of conciliation, an atmosphere of inclusion and love. We can take heart in that. 
that has been a dream, a longing in my heart and many of ours as well. As we go forth today from this time, we invite you to join us in continued reflection and conversation in our social hour. In addition, this particular Sunday is a Share the Plate Sunday in which we offer our generosity and financial support, not just for the ongoing work and ministries of our own community, but also for a partner organization. That partner organization this month is Alpha House, which works locally to support children and families that are experiencing housing crises or homelessness. We invite you to visit our giving page, uuaa.org forward slash giving to support with your generosity, not just the ministries of our community, but also that of Alpha House. Go forth, my friends, knowing that you are held in the spirit of love. We are possibility brought alive. The work ahead that lies ahead that needs us is deep. And we Unitarian Universalists have never shied away from that. We have always been the people to be on the leading edge, helping nudge, guide, support our society in moving in the directions that it needs. We will rise to that occasion again as a people united through faith, through commitment, through the gentleness of love and compassion. Go forth knowing that you are affirmed and held in all of those commitments until we are with one another again.